Tonight, we'll be speaking with a former minister who is one of the frontline aspirants in the race and is a heavyweight in all, uh, in all uh, sp uh, speaking in all directions. So tonight, we'll be speaking with him. But again, I'll take you to River State. What is going on in that state? It does mean with the court ruling today that there is no budget in River State. So where does this leave Governor Fubara? We'll be looking at all the legal angles and what implications it, it has for the state and the options left for Governor Fubara. Where, where does the peace process introduce or the, interfer, uh, uh, the influence of President Tinubu in all of this matter? These are some of the issues we'll be discussing tonight. Just stick around with me, everyone, because first and foremost, let's have you with your political roundup stories. A governorship aspirant in the All Progressives Congress in Edo State, Honorable Anamero Dekeri, has faulted the report of his exclusion from the governorship race by the Professor Julius Robert-led screening panel, insisting that he remains in the race. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, Honorable Dekeri described the report presented by the committee as a betrayal of the true performance of the aspirants as it lacks merit. The report presented by the committee totally betrayed the true performance of the aspirants a lacking in merit which was observed even by the state party leaders. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 elections in Kaduna State, Issa Ashiru, has been reacting to last week's Supreme Court judgment, which affirmed the election of Gordon Basani of the All Progressives Congress. Addressing a news conference in Kaduna, Mr. Ashiru notes that justice was not served in the apex court's ruling, insisting that he was robbed of his mandate freely given to him by the electorate. The Young Progressives Congress YPP has denied reports about a purported collapse of the party structure into the All Progressives Congress in Akwaibom State. The YPP says this report is false and an imagination of some group of individuals. A statement from the party signed by the National Policy Secretary says, although some people have been given Although some people have been given opportunities on the platform of the party, they have failed to reciprocate commitments to build the parties ideologically, and the party is making an urgent review of the process of leadership recruitment. Thank you so much, everyone. We're continuing our monitoring of the unfolding drama of the APC and the governorship race. The screening process led by the Professor Julia Zinyavera Committee has culminated in the availing of a final list featuring four aspirants. Why some say, no, it is actually six. Some would say it was an initial 10. But what a lot of people would not disagree with is the fact that there are 29 established interest aspirants in Edo APC. But why the screening committee says their, their own effort is to prune the number down from 29, however, there are effort that has been met with mixed reactions among the aspirants. Some contenders express their discontent, citing concerns of fairness and justice. Today, a member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Anamero Dekeri, is one of those who have come forward in a press conference in Abuja, and he says that the outcome of that committee's uh, activity is a betrayer of the true qualities of those who were screened and he says that it's going to go ahead. Take a listen again to him. The report presented by the committee totally betrayed the true performance of the aspirants, a lackey in merit, which was observed even by the state party leaders who set up the committee and were proposing an appeal committee to write the wrong before the attention of the House was drawn to the effect that the National Working Committee of our great party, the All Progressive Congress, has clarified the appropriate organ that has the local standing to screen aspirants after they procure and submit their expression and nomination, uh, their expression of interest and nomination forms. Well, that's one of uh, the aspirants, a sitting member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Anamero. They carry. Well, the stakes are definitely high as the political landscape in Edo is taking shape. But again, what does this mean? It's, uh, when we wonder that, when that process went on, uh, everyone will accept it. But then there are those who say, the democracy is, this is far from democracy. So now, 
I'm being joined by one of the frontline aspirants in that race for the APC ticket, a former Minister of Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Agba. He joins us live here in our studio. Thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shane, for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's clarify. There are those who believe that the Honorable Unheo Vera's committee, first and foremost, came from 29, pruned the number down to 10. From 10, we understand it went to 6, and there from 6, he went down to 4. Do you agree with the report, though? No, I don't uh, agree that uh, they pruned it down to 4. And uh, I'm also not in agreement that it was initially pruned to 10. Because I'm going to speak on the basis of uh, what we were told. And uh, I think it's the handiwork of mischief uh, makers. On the 13th of January, the leadership of the state party invited us uh, over for a meeting, that is the, the aspirants. And uh, they did say that uh, 29 was unwieldy and uh, it will amount to a waste of money. That was one, one reason they felt that uh, there was a need to, to prune down. Who uh, chaired this meeting? It was chaired by our leader of the state, which is uh, Comrade Adam Salu Oshomole. And this was in Benin? No, here in, uh, in Abuja. Abuja. Yeah, we were all invited to, to, to Abuja. The where 29 we... of you and some Edo APC statutory leaders. Leaders, yes. We, we were all there. And uh, the issue was, let's prune this down, because at the end of the day, there's just going to be one candidate, and we need to remain as one family. Uh, secondly, there is no use wasting of, of money. And the aspirants were asked, do you agree that we should do this? And there was no one that uh, rejected the, the suggestion that was made. So well, we unanimously, the 29 yes. agreed. Yes. At that meeting, we were 26. Eventually, it increased to, to 29. So on uh, the 15th, there was another stakeholders meeting. Uh, with the chairman, national chairman of the party and the, uh, uh, the national working uh, committee. And this also included uh, uh, leadership uh, from uh, Edo and all the aspirants. Okay, first in Edo, before coming to uh, Abuja, it was made clear that there will be no zoning. In fact, the state uh, secretary had announced that. And on the basis of that, you know, you find that there were aspirants from all three senatorial districts. At the meeting of the 13th, it was also reiterated that there will be no zoning. So it wasn't one of the criteria uh, that was to be used for pruning. And then when we met again at the National Working Committee, it was further reiterated that there will be no zoning. And that there will be a pruning to a manageable number. Uh, we went through that exercise, I think, on the 15th and 16th. That's Monday 15th and uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday 16th. I was interviewed on, the, on Tuesday uh, the 16th. And then uh, on the 19th, we were all invited back, all the aspirants, uh, to the National Assembly. One of the halls was what we, we used. That was where the report of the committee was presented to us again, by the leader of the party in our state. Because, of course, uh, the committee had presented the report to the leadership. They had scrutinized it, asked questions, and then they now presented that report to us. At that uh, meeting, we were told that it had been pruned down to six, two per uh, senatorial district. Since that happened, no other meeting has been called. So that's six. Yes, six. Two per senatorial district. Yes. Did you make the cut? Yes, I did. There was no mention of, oh, there was initially 10, and then it's now six. Nobody mentioned that at that meeting. We were just told that it has been pulled down to six. Was there a written report of the committee? We weren't presented with that written report, but the, the uh, chair of that uh, occasion read through the report. Highlights. So it wasn't reading line, line by line. Uh, to us, and he did say that the six names were not in order of of performance. Uh, what he did have is that there were uh, two aspirants from Edo South 
uh, two aspirants from Edo Central and uh, two aspirants uh, from Edo North. I, I, I recall in that uh, meeting that one of the aspirants from Edo North, you know, uh, uh, through one of his uh, argument, the comrade governor did make uh, some explanation to him. And he said, I recall in 2016, when he was governor and he was about leaving, and uh, someone came to him from Edo North to say, uh, I want you to support me to be governor. And he felt that it was uh, not morally right mm. that he was a governor from Edo North, you know, leaving the saddle of office and handing over again to another uh, uh, governor from, from Edo North. Uh, that was the way he responded uh, uh, to that. But the truth is, at the end of the meeting, all, it came down to six. Uh, the members of the committee, uh, those who traveled in uh, from uh, Edo, have since uh, gone back. Uh, no other meeting has been called, just like it was called the initial time, where we were told, we would like to prune, do you agree? So no one has asked any other person uh, whether they agree to a further pruning, no criteria has been provided, you know, uh, like it was provided in the first instance to say this will be uh, the terms of reference. But it was actually agreed that, um, that nobody, even after the report, is stopped from obtaining forms. Yes, that was also agreed. It, it is an advisory report. Report, yes, of and, course. Yeah, for the, for the aspirants that if you are not on that list, uh, and people like Pastor uh, Izeyamo, who's not on that list, mm. which uh, some members of your party had raised objection in the, in the state to say, how would an Ozage Izeyamo not be on that list? And those who were saying there are a number of people who are also, and Amero Dekeri, not also on that list. There are a lot of people who are agitated about this. So the party is not precluding anyone from going ahead. Uh, the party did say that it was advisory. But you will recall, like I said, we all agreed at the beginning uh, whether the pruning should be done, and we all said uh, yes. So the, the story about the four, the, the final four, which we got yeah. uh, from, um, the, so from members of that committee to say, this is uh, the final four, you do not agree with it. I am not aware of any other uh, screening after the meeting of uh, where six were, were told. Nobody well, we said that this final four was eventually agreed on by the Inovera Committee, and this including some of the members. I mean, you know these people. They were people yeah. that uh, went through the screening Shale, with you. If you want to cut your hair, or if somebody wants to cut your hair, will you be present when it is done? You, you just have to. We had a meeting, and they said, we would like to do pruning. Do you agree? We said yes. And then we went through an exercise. We were all given the uh, terms of reference for it. And then they came back to present to us the result of it. If there was going to be any other further pruning, don't you think that the six who made it should be invited once again? Do you think the process was uh, fair enough? I, I, the, the process that, that, led, that to, led to the final, uh, to, to the, 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 the six. I don't have the, the process itself, yes. Okay. Because you were part of the No, the, the process itself that led to that, because you are talking about the process. Mm -hmm. I don't have the details of what was written. The criteria. Yeah. To, no, criteria we, we are aware. But I don't have the details of the report. So I don't know what was written in the report to know whether it was fair or not, because I, I, I wouldn't know what was written about me, for instance. So, so all those things Kasim Afebu said yesterday were not true? Kasim, I heard him say that it was initially reduced to 10. I was surprised. How did he get that? Was he a member of the, of the committee? He wasn't. And no one told us when the committee made that report out. It was never mentioned. All they mentioned was six. I mean, we are hearing that there, are, there is a favored candidate in, in, in uh, what we are hearing. Are you the favored candidate? If I was the favored candidate with the, uh, the story that is going on, if it is true, would my name not be there? The, the, the fact remains that uh, the national came out with a calendar. And I am one who plans my activity, okay? 
And uh, what, what I did was a day before it was due for collection, you know, I made the payment for the expression of interest and for collecting the forms. And that payment was made about uh, 9.58 uh, uh, a.m. on the 9th of uh, January. I knew I wasn't going to be around on the 10th because I was traveling. So I got a former colleague of mine to go pick up the form. So you already have your form? I have my form. He picked up the form uh, at about 10.30 a.m. This is about 100 million? No, 50 million. 50 million. Bo yes. bo for the both forms? Yes. The expression it's of 10 express? and 40. 10 and 40. Yes. Making 50. Making, making uh, 50. At about 1 o'clock that day, there was some communication from the state secretary saying no one should collect the form until we go through this process. So you have already received I've already the collected form. the form. I am not a wizard, and there's no way I would know that they were planning to, to do so. I hear that some people have that against me. They said I disobeyed the party. How would I have known what the party was planning to do if a, a timetable is out? Mm -hmm which clearly stays the day collection will start. How is your closeness with uh, Comrade Adams Oshomale? I am very close to all the leaders. No, I'm asking about Adams Oshomale. He was my boss. He's a friend and a brother. I am close to him. So you're a favored one from, from that angle? Not necessarily. Is Kazim not uh, also his uh, friend? Is Kazim not his, uh, uh, his brother? Was he also not his uh, star? But he didn't make the cut. You say you made his, so the cut of six. Yeah. What I'm trying to say, if it's about that favoritism, you know, Kazim should make it. It wasn't about well, that. Since you have made the cut from yeah. your own, uh, the report you said the committee gave, yeah. uh, it looks like you are a favored candidate. Is that what you think? No. The, 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 the fact is that I understand the problems that the state is going through. Okay, I have reached out to the people. We need a candidate that should be able to win an election for us. And you think you are the one? Of course. Look at uh, the, the uh, uh, contestants or aspirants from PDP. Uh, look at the aspirants from uh, Labour Party. These are the people we are going to contend with that we'll be going into debates with. Look at their profiles and see what they have. Look at the four right now and if, even others you know, and see what their profile is. And then you tell me what you think. If you go read our profiles, who you think should be the best to handle this mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, experience. The dynamics of Edo politics is usually uh, different from the intellectualism mm -hmm. and those kind of things that you have described. Uh, the dynamics and those things that the voters look at yeah. That's totally different. Yeah. And uh, in these ways, there are those who will say, you are from uh, the same senatorial district as Comrade Adam Sashomale. Is that right? Of course, that's right. And uh, those who will say, fairly speaking, yeah. should the next governor come from that senatorial district? The current governor is from Edo South. He's done two terms. Eight years. Eight years. Okay. The current governor is not from Edo North. And I think we have also gone beyond this when the party did say ab initio, no zoning. So you cannot begin to change the rules of the game in the middle of the game. I'm would just, would I, that be I'm right? I'm just asking a question that, 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 that sits in the hearts that, that of the quest, sensibilities that question, of the people of Edo State. Yeah, that question has are, since been a, answered by the party. Those who are from the Edo South, what yeah. do you think they would think about those of you from the North? Yeah. Adam Sushomale will spend eight years before mm. Godwin Obaseki from yeah. Central will spend eight years. Mm. Where does this leave the Edo South people? No, Godwin Obaseki is from South. It's not I mean, from, uh, from the South. It's not, from, the it's not from, yeah. from uh, Central. Yeah. And it, it is not uh, uh, an issue of it comes here, it goes around. Look at the problems that the state currently has. If we want to look at the issue of equity, honestly, in fairness, Central has had two governors, South has had four, and the North has only had one, who would say Comrade Adam Sali Oshomale. If you look at the number of ministers, Central has had five. Uh, the South has had three, and I was the first from the North. We have the second one. And I was also a minister of state, not a full-fledged minister. So if you look at it from this uh, perspective, will you say that there's uh, equity? 
Again, when you look at faithfulness to the party, a donut has been very, very faithful to the party. Since 2007, I have delivered from my, my unit, my ward, my local government, and my senatorial district. In fact, in the second term of Comrade Adams, or Shomole, the 2012 uh, elections, from my unit, it was 100%. And he did say to me, Clem, I didn't ask you to go and commit murder. I always say we should win. Because having seen the work that he did from 2008 when he came in, it made it a lot easier for me in 2012 because there was something to speak to. And that's also the issue now. Because when I say I consider myself the best, I was a commissioner in the state mm -hmm. and I did work. But there, there are those who will compare you to the likes of uh, um, Osage Izeyamu, who Is has been an institutional politician in Edo State. Do you stand in the same, on the same pedestal, politically speaking, with an Osage Izeyamu? Mine is totally different because uh, politics is not my only address. I worked in Chevron. You know, and I, I rose to become a manager, not only here in Nigeria, but in Kazakhstan. Okay? And it was from Chevron, I took a leave of absence, and I came to Edo. And the urban renewal you find in Benin was my product. Okay? Under Adam Sushomole. Under Adam Sushomole. I did the designs. Yes, he was the governor, so he, he was leading the team. But people had to generate some of those uh, ideas. And I did in most of uh, 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 the cases. As a minister, I attracted several projects to the state, like never before, which is one ground some people seem to have with me because they feel that once you attract projects, you are making money and you should come and share money. Let me, let me look, uh, take, take you to the area of your capacity. Yeah. Uh, you have talked about your experience, your profile, your pedigree, but then... Uh, do you really understand the problem and the challenges uh, of Edo people today? And if you do, what would you say is the primary challenge, challenge or problem of the people of Edo today? Right now in Edo, the people feel pain. You know, uh, they do not have a governor who has empathy for them and the problems that the state has. During Comrade Adams, Ali Oshomole's regime, those uh, eight uh, years, there was substantial progress that was made in the infrastructure. Okay, and when I'm talking of infrastructure here, it's about road infrastructure, uh, uh, flooding uh, infrastructure, the urban renewal programs uh, that we did. At the time I came to Edo in 2009, there were no street lights anywhere in Benin, the, the state capital. There were no walkways. Uh, in, in Benin, we had to redesign uh, uh, Benin. In fact, Airport Road was a single carriageway. When Uyi and I, who was commissioner for works, we did the design, some people said we were going to bring down the palace uh, wall. Thanks to His Royal uh, uh, Majesty, who said, if we have to bring down the wall, let us do it. He wanted development. The same thing, too, for Saple Road, and all these roads I'm mentioning now, they are federal roads, okay? Uh, a few days ago, I was saying to, to, to some people, Edo is a huge agrarian uh, place, whether it's Edo North, Edo Central, or Edo South, rich in agriculture. But our post-harvest loss in Edo is 60%. So it means that our farmers are laboring in vain. Again, you look at the inflation rate. 26% uh, uh, inflation. But when you look at food inflation, it is 33.2% uh, for a state that produces food. So a, a cob of corn that sells in a rural area for 50 naira will be sold in Benin for, for 2,000. That will not be right. You know, so you, you need someone who has the, the understanding that knows the state to fix this problem. But, but what exactly, I mean, if you, uh, because you are a scientist from what I gather, isn't it? I'm an economist. You're an economist. So yeah. in that sense, uh, when we say what is uh, the, uh, the statement of the problem, yeah. uh, we have to be able to encapsulate it in one single uh, statement. What would you say is the one problem of Edo people? 
the one problem of Edo people is poverty. You, you have the figures, you have the numbers. Yes, I do. What, what, what are the figures saying? The multidimensionally, the rural areas are poor. Okay? In terms of monetary poverty, the urban areas are poor. And there are two different types of uh, poverty. You know, in Nigeria, we have said that in terms of monetary poverty, there are 69.5 million uh, poor Nigerians. But multidimensionally, there are 133. And what multidimensional poverty here means is lack of access to basic education, lack of access to basic health, a lack of access to portable drinking uh, uh, water, a lack of access to sanitation. And when you see a door of today, okay, multidimensionally, it's really, really poor. When you look at the schools, there are no teachers. Schools have two and a half teachers. And that is wrong. So what, 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 how are you going to fix that? Okay, the way to fix it is in my trust program, transforming our rural and urban spaces together. Okay, for schools, for instance, ensure that in the rural areas, there is accommodation that is provided for teachers. Because it is one thing that discourages them from coming to school. I went to St. John's College for a rural area. Our teachers had accommodation provided. So it was, they were very willing to work in those areas. Then when we look at the issue of uh, basic uh, uh, health, uh, for instance, you will find that anyone who is sick in a donut that requires some specialist uh, treatment, you have to travel all the way to Irwa or you go to Benin. Once you have to go beyond one hour or two hours drive to get access to, to health, that in itself is a problem. You are poor. You have the money in your pocket, but there is no access to, uh, to the health uh, facilities. Our rural areas do not have water. People can't find water to drink. And that is a problem. So all of this you have in plan, uh, but it's dependent on whether or not you get a ticket first, and also, at the end of the day, whether or not people of Edo uh, vote for you in yeah. the end of, at the end of the day. Yeah. So what is the assurance that you can get a ticket? I know that on the, when we have a free and fair exercise, the people know me. I have worked in the state before. They have seen the things that I have brought to the state as minister. I am not the first, like I said. There have been eight ministers before me and none has performed in terms of facilitating projects the way that I have done. And that the people want me, right. they will vote for me. Prince Clem Agba, uh, one of the aspirants in the Edo APC governorship race. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you for and having me. Last time I was here, I said to Shambale, why do you guys keep saying former minister? Because a month before I left, they were saying outgoing minister. And I thought there's a transition for this, see, that when you leave, you become an immediate past minister, <laughs> and then before you become former, and then you become one time, and then you become S Y minister. For, former, former, former is still, even if it's 24 hours ago, it's still former. But thank you so much indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I wish you the very best. We'll take a break, everyone. But yeah. when we return, our attention will be on the politics of Rivers and things are developing quite fast. The court ruling today indicates that the body presented by Governor Fubara has been nullified. Honorable Samson Osage, a former member of the House of Representatives and a lawyer, will be speaking with us tonight, giving us legal perspectives in all of this. We understand there is another court order asking parties to maintain status quo. What does this mean? A lot of drama in River State. Thank you so much indeed, everyone. So today, Justice James Omotosha of the Federal High Court in Abuja nullified the 800 billion budget passed by the Edison here led group of the River Staters of Assembly and uh, was signed into law thereafter by uh, the River's Governor, Seminar Ayi Fubara. The court also upheld the suit filed by the Assembly and Speaker Martin Amewile against uh, Governor Fubara, which sought an order of injunction restraining the Governor from frustrating the Assembly under his leadership as Speaker, among several other prayers. So, 
a little background. On the 13th of December 2023, in the heat of the protracted political crisis rocking the, the state and the demolition of the assembly complex, the Governor Fubara presented the 2024 Rivers budget proposal of 800 billion naira to five members of the state assembly led by uh, Honorable Edisina here. The presentation was done at the government house in Port Harcourt following the demolition of the assembly complex by the state government and uh, the after a court restrained a year's contender, Martin Zamorelli, from using the assembly complex a year and the other pro Fubara lawmakers passed the budget estimate and the governor signed the bill into law saying it is aimed at promoting economic development through inclusive growth and addressing socio-economic inequality in the state. Meanwhile, the Rivers APC Kataka Chairman, Mr. Tony Okocha, has held the judgment of the Federal High Court of Abuja voiding the budget presentation by the Governor Simfubara to the Edison AEA group of the Rivers State House of Assembly at the height of the political tension in the state. Mr. Okocha is in, uh, in an exclusive interview with China's television in Podaka notes that he had earlier warned the governor to be cautious of some of his decisions not to put the state into crisis. Take a listen to him. What constitutes an assembly is not the building. It is the human being, the assembly members elected. And for an assembly to sit and be seen to be properly, it must have one third of the members sitting and meeting. And one third of 31, I mean, conservatively, is 10. So even discussing with four members of the assembly and submitting to them or presenting to them a document as all important, as all important and as crucial as, it, as the budget is criminal in the first place. Okay, so the judge was right. In fact, like I said, it's commonsensical that you don't can't do a thing like that. All right then. So things are developing so fast. Then we are now hearing and understanding that there is a new development coming from the courtroom. Uh, Justice Joyce uh, Ambul Malik of the Federal High Court in Abuja has now ordered all parties in the River State Assembly crisis to maintain status quo. Uh, the ruling uh, directs the parties not to make further steps pending the determination of an application that is seeking to stop Governor Fubara from representing the already passed 2024 budget of the state before the legislative house. Well, let's get some insight into this. We need an experienced lawyer, not only a lawyer, someone who has experience in politics of the uh, of the legislature. I'm being joined by a former member of the House of Representatives, Dr. Samson Osage, a legal practitioner, is a vice president of the African Bar Association, West Africa region. He joins us virtually from Abuja. Thank you so much, Honorable, for joining us. It's good to see you. Give us a sense because uh, this is not the first time that we're seeing this kind of crisis in River State, and especially one that involves um, arguing the, the number of lawmakers sitting uh, in the state. We've seen this happen in Oyose. We've seen this happen in Bayosa. We've seen this happen in Kogi. Even in Edo State, this has happened. But what does this particular one uh, teach us? What can we learn from it? Uh, thank you, Sue, for having me this evening uh, to share some thoughts on the on the legal conundrum uh, that is just now confronting the River State government, particularly the governor of River State. And for this purpose, I need to draw attention to the fact that three sections of the Constitution are quite uh, apt in discussing this subject matter. Section 91 of the Constitution. Section 120 of the Constitution and Section 121 of the Constitution. Beginning with Section 91 of the Constitution, which defines what a House of Assembly is. It says that the House of Assembly shall consist of at least three to four times the number of its members of the House of Representatives from that state. So in other words, the House of Assembly is not the building, it's not the structure. It is the number of persons elected to represent the different constituencies. In River State, for instance, we have 32 elected members of the House of Assembly. And it is expected under Section 91 of the Constitution that not more than one third of that House shall have the authority to conduct legislative business. So what is happening now is exactly what Governor Basaki had perpetrated in his entire four years as Governor of Federal State. 
Now, in section 121 of the Constitution, it says the, the government shall lay before the House of Assembly. So now, if section 91 defines House of Assembly to me, a House of Assembly that can be made up of three to four times a member or a one third that can take decision, it means that four people cannot form a House of Assembly. Therefore, legally speaking, as at the time Governor Fubara presented the budget before four members of the River State House of Assembly, it was not only an illegality, it was an unconstitutional act, both on the part of the governor himself and on the part of the four legislators who partook in that session. And what is even more, Section 120 of the Constitution made it clear, and that is why Governor Fubara was very careful. You cannot spend any money out of the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the state unless the issuance of that money has been authorized by a law passed by the House of Assembly. So, legally speaking, all the expenditures that Governor Fubara is making in River State today are not supported by law, are not supported by the Constitution. In other words, he's acting ultra the Constitution in the administration of the revenue and finances of River State. And that can be a ground of impeachment in due course. I do not think that Governor Fubara is having legal advice, I mean, proper legal advice. Otherwise, how would agree to the terms of political settlement they had some months ago? It shouldn't have been difficult for him to re re represent that budget before the fully constituted uh, House of Assembly so that he can cross the hurdle, you know, of having the, the budget passed though, by a properly constituted assembly. So for Governor Fubara, it is, it is a very testy time, and he must be careful uh, not to continue to, uh, to, to live in denial that he has breached the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and must be very careful because the House of Assembly itself had granted him the only branch to come and submit that budget. And yet he had continued to live in that breach, and I don't think he has any more chance to continue. The court has no ruled. If I were Governor Fubara, I would represent that budget because it doesn't have one before it, so that it cannot continue a constitutional breach. It cannot have a budget passed by four people. Exactly but, but what if you look at it, uh, so let's system. take it. Let's take it from where this crisis started from. There was yes. a court ruling that established and acknowledged the Edison Ahie group of the House of Assembly. Uh, you've analyzed the number that is recognized by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, in that sense, if the governor is going by the rule in which recognizes the AHIA's uh, group as a, um, the authentic uh, leadership or the House of Assembly, where is his error there? If the court recognizes the, the Edison AHIA, he recognized the DCA as the lawful speaker of the House. The court did not recognize the four members together with uh, here as constituted, as legally constituted the House of Assembly. There are two different things here. The first was who is the authentic speaker? They went to court and the court said it was a uh, uh, here. But they didn't go to the court to define who they what constitute the House of Assembly. So the initial ruling recognizes the uh, here as speaker did not it did not validate uh, River Cedars for Assembly with four members, and no court can validate that because the provision of Section 31 of the Constitution is sacrosanct. So there is a difference between that. If he had gotten the proper legal advice upon signing the terms of agreement with the deed and the House of Assembly, you know, coming back to where they started from with the current speaker, giving, offering an only branch for him to represent the budget, he would have taken that opportunity to represent the budget. And the ruling of today who have had no place. I will advise that he doesn't attempt to go beyond this stage. He should represent the budget before the, the legally constituted House of Assembly of Rivers and then uh, go ahead because he's not likely to be fortunate, you know, in, 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 in this legal tango that he has uh, found himself. In, in, in all of what is happening, uh, yes, the, these are legal issues because it's brought before the court. But these are largely political issues. And also, uh, you can imagine uh, how the political angle to these things will arrest the situation and stop it from moving forward. So there are those who also imagine that, yes, the president, Bola Tinobu, intervened in this matter. 
There is a peace process that everyone should calm their nerves and not go to court. And, you know, how do you take, or what, what's your take on the perspectives of the president, uh, the agreement of the parties in the peace process? Well, for me, you know, politics is a game of give and take. The peace process was wholly accepted by Governor Fubara and indeed all the parties. And they began the, to implement, except of course that he has refused to go and present the budget. So, but he has recognized the, the speakership of uh, Amahwe and the, the, the Amahwe-led uh, parliament, the uh, House of Assembly of River State, made up of over 20 members, over 25 members, have since taken over the reins of legislative duties in River State. If he has recognized them and representing the budget was part of the agreement, why has he not done so? So, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. President has played the role of a father in order to bring sanity, you know, to the entire political uh, system in a river state. But the parties have remained defiant one way or the other. So, I believe that the parties have a duty to allow peace reign, follow the law, and follow the agreement to which they have signed. If they don't do that, then it is no longer the president that is the problem, or that it, 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 the, the, the intervention of the president would have made no impact at all. And it is in their elected self-interest and for the interest of peace, security, rule of law in River State that they should follow the procedure, you know, who plan on seeker so that we don't get to a state where we are now that Obara is to be cited for constitutional breaches. And one of the ways, one of the grounds that can lead to impeachment is a breach of the Constitution. When you spend money belonging to the state without the authorization of your parliament, then you are in gross violation of the ground norm, which is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you can have no defense to that. So he must save himself from the impending, impending uh, uh, catastrophe uh, that, 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 that hang on his neck like the sword of Democles. So you will see now that there is uh, a more problem brewing because from the courtroom of jo uh, Justice Joyce, Abdul Malik of the Federal High Court in Abuja, the court has ordered all parties to maintain status quo. And let me, uh, the aggrieved members that have gone to court uh, include uh, uh, River State House of Assembly member, Representative Bonnie State Constituency Honorable Victor Okonjumbo, uh, Senator Bernard Birabi, Senator Andrew Uchendu, Rear Admiral Fingesi, and Ankyo Briggs, and Emmanuel Denhima. Their lawyer is uh, Luca Adiajulo, and their prayers are that the court should unseat the 27 lawmakers who moved from the PDP to the APC. You know, this is another fundamental issue in the old dynamics. And he's saying, look, whatever that is happening, all parties should maintain status quo. How do you interpret this, uh, Dr. Osage? Maintaining status quo can be an order of the court. Can be an interim order granted before a substantive application before the court, you know, is heard and ruled upon. So it is it is an order that is not likely to last in perpetuity. In other words, you cannot tell at the moment what the final order it will be when the substantive motion on notice will be taken at the next hearing. But what is more important is that regardless of this suit that you have just talked about. The other ruling of the court in validating the presentation and passage of budget and assent, uh, uh, signing of the budget of 800 billion for River State has now has not made has not received the hammer of the court to the extent that that budget is invalid because it was not properly or was not passed by a properly constituted assembly. That is a much more greater issue right now than the issue you have just raised, and I want to believe that those who have gone to court at the moment, you know, to ask the court to unseat the 27 members, you know, on grounds that they have defected to another political party, are going to be facing an uphill task and will not be doing good to the governor if they continue in that trajectory. So, at the moment, what is even more important and more tangential, you know, to Governor Fubara's hold on governance in the river state is... The budget that he is implementing he is implementing a budget that has not been properly passed by a legally constituted assembly. 
So what, uh, what, uh, uh, Dr. Sagi, what you will be advising uh, Governor Fubara is that he should not touch the budget. He should not touch the money that is unappropriated for until this case has been fully determined. No. He, he, what he needs to do is to seek a political solution, ask those who have gone to court against the assembly members to withdraw their matter, and then he represents the budget. That is the easiest way out for him under the circumstance, so that he can represent the budget and stop continuing in the violation of the Constitution. But there are those who say he should not represent the budget. And there are those who say, look, this is a violation. Going to court is a violation of the peace process. To not represent the budget, fight is on. In fact, there are those with the argument that in the eye of the law, those four or five lawmakers were the lawmakers of the House as far as the court was concerned at that material time. And in that sense, whatever they did was legal. I'm binding. That argument will fall flat. That argument, that argument will fall flat in the face of Section 91 of the Constitution. As at the time that body was presented to foreign lawmakers, there was no assembly as such. So let's even assume that the 27 members of the River State House of Assembly that defended to that party loses their seat. It meant that at that material point in time, there was no assembly. Because the, the Constitution does not recognize a number less than one third of the assembly as capable of being exercising of exercising the powers of the legislature. It is clear the constitution we are talking about. We are not talking of a statutory uh, uh, another law made by the assembly. We are talking of the grown norm. He said the mass of assembly shall be made up of three to four times number of the legislature. It shall not be less than 32, 24. It shall not be more than 40. And four by any means cannot constitute the house of assembly under the grand norm of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the 1999 Constitution as amended. So that their argument that only four members constitute the assembly will fall flat in the face of Section 91. And there is no way any court can validate that uh, the, the act of passing a budget by four. So in this sense, uh, uh, it's, it's a real unpass because the case that Karadia Ajula is representing the plaintiffs in another courtroom, in the same federal high court, on one hand, is there the case in uh, which uh, the substantive case of this budget uh, uh, brought to be court by the members of the House of Assembly is on one hand. And you have said tonight that for the governor to be able to have a headway, he needs to seek a political uh, solution to this. But in that sense, you look at it, who bears the brunt in all of this? The box stops on the table of the governor. Like I said, he is working on a very tight rope just now. River State, by the ruling of today, has no budget. So if he spends a penny of the revenue of River State, whether from the internally generated revenue or from the federal allocation, he is doing so in gross violation of Section 120, subsection 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that is gross misconduct, which is capable of leading to his impeachment. So he shouldn't provide, he shouldn't provide his adversaries with weapons to fight him. But and fundamentally, the fundamentally, uh, Dr. Osage, this is uh, a brainchild of a political field with his godfather, Yinsom Wike. That is the primary cause of all of this problem. And so the people of River State will be bearing the brunt in all of these. The, the old dynamics well, is that there is a Yinsan Wiki on one hand, and there is a Fubara on another hand. And in all of this fight, it does look like the grass is going to suffer. If there is no budget, governance, governance is going to be at a standstill. Sure. And that is why the governor, as the chief executive officer of the state, must do everything within his powers to ensure that the exercise of his powers are not hindered by any constitutional or legal conundrum such as he has found himself. Regardless of the political interpretations to what is going on, whether there's a godfather somewhere or not, he must keep his eye on the ball to ensure that in the course of this single group, he is not found wanting as violating any law of the land, not to even talk of the Constitution. So uh, it is in his own interest, and yeah. it is in the interest of the entire reverse people, that the, the, 
political solution that was uh, midwifed by Mr. President be allowed to see the light of the day. Well, it doesn't look All like, uh, and this is matter. perhaps how I want us to wrap this up in 30 seconds, uh, Dr. Osage. Uh, it does look like the intervention of President Tunubu is not working. He's not gaining the right result. Although it worked to a large extent, but with what has happened today alone, two court rulings or an, an order of court are looking like it has escalated the problem the more. Do, would they have to go back to President Tunubu uh, to revisit the peace process? Or if you were President Tunubu and you are hearing this, what would you do? President Tunubu is not the governor of River State. He's the president of Nigeria and he has a responsibility to govern this nation, including all the subnational governments. His intervention is on black and white. And I think that the parties, the parties to that agreement must come together to save River State from unnecessary hits and unnecessary destruction. It is not in the interest of any of those parties, any of the parties, it is not in the larger interest of the people of River State. Above all, it is not in the interest of the governor of the state himself, who must ensure that he navigates his way out of this crisis by not uh, giving himself up All right. to be found wanting of breaching the constitution or any law of land. Dr. Samson Osage is a legal practitioner as the vice president of the African Bar Association Western Region and a former member of the House of Representatives. Thank you so much indeed for your time and the legal insight that you've given to us on this matter. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you so much, Sean, for having me. I appreciate God it. God bless you. Just before we go, everyone, let's tell you that yet there is another court case that is brewing, and this one is about the internal workings of the People's Democratic Party. One of the members of the PDP, uh, Mr. Shegun Shomomi, has gone to court, his approach to court, to compel the neck of the, uh, the, the party to conduct a neck meeting or be restrained in perpetuity from taking any further action he has since approached the court uh, sick in, in his originating summons, which you can see on, this, on the screen, the story about the PDP. Chegun Sohumi has approached the court asking the neck of the party to conduct a neck of the restraint, a neck meeting of the restraint in perpetuity from taking any further action. And that's our... We close the program tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure I'll see you tomorrow. God willing. Bye-bye.